uh, what I said was we'll use today for exam review. So that's the plan. Let me start out with a brief overview of the topics that we covered for um, covered for exam two. So the topics that we are covering in exam two are special relativity, and I guess uh, this uh, this is how I'm going to call it: early quantum mechanics. So. Um, the bigger portion of your exam is special relativity, about 70% of the exam. And um, so, so what I want to give you is some quick um, 20, 30 minute version of the overview so that um, you are reminded of what we've been covering since about a month ago. So, um, so for special relativity, this is, these are relativity. These are really the key things that you need to remember. And you know, when we are covering special relativity, we covered it in different order, but now you know everything in special relativity. The very thing at the very center of what you remember about special relativity should be Lorentz transformation. That's the starting point for everything that you are going to do from scratch. So you should remember Lorentz transformation along with the definitions of these common symbols we are using, beta for speed as a fraction of speed of light, and gamma as this combination of quantities, 1 minus beta squared, that occurs a lot in special relativity formulas. And um, so this is the form I always write down in. The, so you have frame S prime moving at relative speed of beta C in the positive exit direction relative to frame S. Then this is the transformation rule. The time coordinate, position coordinate in the S prime frame is given by this Lorentz transformation. Gamma CT minus beta X, um, gamma X minus beta CT, Y, and Z. So um, as you are reviewing, this is uh, the very first thing you start out with. Um, instead, of the, instead of the special case formulas, because um, if, when you see a new problem, this will never give you a wrong result. But for the special case formulas, which you might remember as length contraction and time dilation, so the length contraction says that length of the ruler you measure is the proper length divided by gamma. And the time dilation says that the amount of time passage that you measure um, over clock that's moving relative to you is gamma times the proper time that the clock measures. These are special case formulas. They apply for the situations where they are derived, and whatever problem you have, if you recognize that as, oh, it is exactly the situation, then sure, use them. But these are not uh, very fundamental relationship. There are ways to misuse this to get into some wrong situation. So if you see a special relativity kinematics problem, and you don't immediately recognize it as, oh, it's time dilation problem, or it's length contraction problem, then your best bet is to start out with the uh, Lorentz transformation, because this is the, the very basic law. Um, let's see. So this is the centerpiece of special relativity, and big chunk of it is kind of application of this. And um, I guess I should uh, kind of divide up special relativity into two parts. There's um, so there's the relativistic kinematics. So special relativity kinematics. So that's just you know, transformation of coordinates, how velocity is different in different reference frames. And um, there will be some special, uh, special formulas that it's probably good for you to have in your formula sheet, like the velocity transformation formulas. I know 
um, yeah, I, I guess I never actually lectured on it, <laughs> but um, but there was there were homework questions on it, which means it's a fair game for me to put at least the, like multiple choice questions on the exam. So you should know things like the velocity transformation formula. Um, I guess your does your textbook use u to represent the velocity of the object? Okay. Um, so like u prime, velocity of some object in the frame s prime is um, in along the x direction is, uh, let me try to remember this. I guess it should be u minus v divided by um, 1 plus u, sorry, u x, x times v divided by uh, c squared. Or I think your textbook might say u parallel uh, along the direction of the relative velocity between the frames. And um, so let me actually do it this way. Parallel, yeah. parallel, parallel, parallel. And um, the velocity in the perpendicular direction is different. It's the, um, the velocity in the perpendicular direction divided by, I want to say the same factor. No, it's not the same factor. This is why you should have it in the formula sheet. This is the one formula I don't actually have memorized. Because um, uh, for reason that I mentioned earlier when we were doing special relativity, that um, these quantities, the coordinates, are four vectors. And um, the energy and momentum that I'm about to bring up, that's also four vector. But velocity is not a four vector. So it transforms under very complicated set of <laughs> expressions that, um, that I don't quite have it memorized. So I guess they use x and y. Yeah, so um, ah, it's this vector of gamma that I forgot about. No, uh, wait, don't they have a, uh, I'm looking for the prime. Hmm. Yeah, I guess, um, so the version that's given in the textbook is they give you the velocity in the frame S if you know the velocity in frame S prime. So, um, so these are kind of special case formulas that you should have in your formula sheet and Re review the homework questions where you saw them in. So that, um, you know, if it comes up in multiple choice question, then you are not completely stumped by it. So going from primed frame to unprimed, then this would be plus x prime. Um, and so y, x, y. Going from the prime, the coordinate divided by gamma, 1 plus u prime x v divided by c squared. So, um, and there are other special case formulas, Doppler shift. So, um, so I want you to distinguish between what are basic um, basic generally applicable formulas. Basic, generally applicable formulas and relationships from special case formulas. And so exam is in two weeks, two weeks, two days. There aren't that, there isn't that much time. Um, I would say focus on the gen basic, generally applicable relationships and how they are used in problems first. And these special case formulas, if you, you know, if you somehow never get to them, it will never be a big part of the exam. There's kind of reason why we didn't cover this in lecture, it's because that's not the emphasis. Um, so, um, so, you know, start off with this. this. So these are um, special relativistic kinematics. And we spent quite a bit of time, and you spent, hopefully, spent quite a bit of your time working on homework problems that dealt with special relativity dynamics. 
federal relativistic dynamics. And really what they are, are they are collision questions, collision problems that deal with energy and momentum. So as a reminder, these are some basic relationships that you know about energy and momentum in special relativity. You know that energy, this is the total energy, not kinetic energy, it's the total energy. It's given by gamma mc squared. And momentum, the relativistically correct expression is gamma mv. And technically it's a vector, although I'll try to stay away from two-dimensional questions. Um, and there are, um, and these two are related to each other in two important ways. You could, uh, um, so you know, I wrote up a note how um, there's a deeper kind of underlying mathematics. But for the purpose of this class, you can kind of remember it this way. Um, you could remember that there's an energy momentum relationship. This energy and momentum are related to each other um, and the rest mass. And that energy momentum relate oops, wrong color pen. That energy momentum relationship is energy squared is equal to there's a portion of this energy that's coming from the rest energy, and there's a portion that's related to the momentum or what would it be the kinetic energy. So this is an important relationship. And the other one, I guess I would just uh, put, if I were to write it down, I would put it under handi heading of Lorentz invariant. But that's more about how you use that idea that this, um, that this mass is invariant. How you use that in a collision question to help simplify algebra. So as far as formulas and special, well, formulas go, this is kind of it. I mean, you might you know, look up and write down Doppler shift formula. Do I have this memorized? I don't think I have this memorized either. Doppler shift formula, I, so you kind of, so F prime, I guess, um, yeah, uh, let me not waste time on this. So you do, you know, look up this and have it in your formula sheet if there's time, if, if there's a space for it. But so, um, yeah. But what's on this left hand side? These are the basic relationships, and knowing how to use this will be a big chunk of your exam. So I, uh, by the way, I hope uh, you guys all realize I haven't written the exam yet, so <laughs> I don't actually know what will be on the exam, although I have some idea. And I can show you as a way of uh, what I have put on the exam in the past, that you can see that as far as the free form portion goes, what I have highlighted here is the big chunk of what was on the free form portion of the exam. So, and I guess I'm pointing this out to steer people away from potentially costly mistake of you know, once again, trying to memorize a bunch of um, formulas and leaving it there. Know how to actually apply these basic principles. Because this question that I put on, this is essentially Lorentz transformation question, um, where you are sort of computing these space-time coordinates using Lorentz transformation. If you're simply trying to use length contraction and time dilation, in some places it would have worked, but there will be other places where it didn't work. Um, and so in this class, uh, I didn't quite get to spend as much time using space-time diagram as I was hoping to. Um, but whatever question I write, it'll be in this way. It'll be sort of like with your exam one. There's one question involving ray tra or lenses, geometric optics, where you could have drawn ray diagram and that would have helped you think through the question. But if you're just working through formulas that it still kind of worked out. I'll try to do something similar here. But it comes down to that there's an entire question where the whole thing is just working through Lorentz transformation and applying it in different ways. And um, the other question that you see in the post sample exam is analyzing a bunch of different collisions. And we'll set aside some time today doing problems like, maybe we should do exactly these problems. We'll set aside some time today doing problems like this. But it comes down to if you have these, you know, these two formulas memorized, 
then great. That's better than nothing. But uh, most of the questions, you won't be simply writing this down. You are using conservation of energy and momentum, go through some series of calculations, algebraic manipulations to get to some answer that the question is looking for. Kind of what you are doing on your chapter five, second problem set towards the end. Right? Some of you are working on that <laughs> over the uh, spring break. Um, yeah, so, so that's it for special relativity, more or less, questions? <laughs>